<clears throat> my brother, you asked about an alliance. My presence here signals that we want to work together. It also signals that we have worked together. It also sends a message to the other opposition party that we are supposed to work for one common goal, and that is the Zambian people. How we are going to work out this and how we are going to work together depends on how we are going to be meeting now in private before we come and tell you that there's a birth of a child. So right now, these are proposals. What is local lunch? Today lunch, I'm not going to be Today lunch, I'm not going to it's normal. In politics, it's very normal. Yeah. Don't take it like it's a, a witchcraft. It's not. And that's why we're doing it in the open. Yeah. And uh, for us, during Zambia, must, and during the day, <laughs> and for Zambia must prosper, we have announced to the nation that we are going to make overtures to all the opposition parties that we think we can work with, that we believe have the same philosophy, the same ideological thinking as us. So there's nothing untoward with this kind of meeting. So once we agree on the fundamentals, I'm sure the nation will be told. Uh, uh, the directive that VXs must be sold, you know, we must distinguish developmental agenda yes. from uh, mere rhetoric and just platform shopping for populist pronouncements. You must understand that when the president speaks, sometimes he's trying to make headlines and trying to distract the nation from what is really hurting them. These VXs for us, at least speaking for Zambia, must cross, are not an issue. Yeah. They are not an issue at all. This country is 752,000 square kilometers. It's a big country. So you can't compare this country to England. England is 60 times smaller than Zambia, with simple geography, social studies actually, grade seven, social studies. So when you paper one. Eh, so, so when he says that uh, in developed countries, some of the leaders just drive small cars, it is true, but they drive small cars to go and park them, and some of them get into what they call tubes, my train, to take them to work. Others, they ride bicycles to go to work. It's true, yeah. because their distances are shorter. Now, if Honorable Nalumang, the Vice President, was to go to Kaputa, you want her to go in the Vits, Kakafikaka Vits, Kaputa. I've been there. Nangukayangu. Nangukayangu. Are you honestly telling me that the MP for Shangombo will have to go and drive a Yango or a Vits or a Arion? Let's be serious. The terrain in this country is not the same as the terrain in Europe. Yeah. The size of the countries are different. So let's not mix the two. But I'm glad that he's making this plan. Because somewhere along the line, the MPs and some of the ministers are getting hurt. Because they are thinking, so how are we going to visit our constituents? Not every country is like Zambia. So we must make our judgment based on the local circumstances. This VX story for me is one of those stories where we want headlines and you people will go and report the president is being economical. No. The MPs and the ministers who live in far-flanked areas and constituencies are in far-flanked areas are going to be hurt. Have you ever been to Zambia? I've been there. Have you ever been to Ikeleng? I've been there. When you reach Solwezi, just to educate you, to get to Zambezi is 540 kilometers. It's like going to Livingston from here. Now you have come from Lusaka to Solwezi, then from Solwezi to Chavuma or Zambezi. Is the road the same there? Is the same road from Sowezi going up to Mwini Lunga Ikeleng the same, the terrain? It's not. How unfair is this president being to those MPs and ministers who want to get to their constituencies and visit? Same for people who are going to be going to Lundaz. Have you been to the Lundaz road? It's the same minister of infrastructure, Honorable Milupi, who was telling the nation, that's not an economic road. So we want to repair that road. So how does the MP in Lundazi, in Chasefu, in Vub, we get there with those bad roads? If the roads were repaired, the infrastructure was taken care of, then he could argue to say, drive, because these smokers can reach there. Then we would have said, ah, the president, 
well done. Because you've taken care of the basics. But the roads are not yet done. And there is no plan for the infrastructure. That is why you've seen Honorable Midupi go quiet. We are still talking about the Lusaka and Dola Dio carriage road. Are we hearing anything? And yet people, even here, it used to take me three hours to get from here to go and see my parents when they were alive in Mufulir. It now takes five, seven hours to get to Mufulir. Why? The road is bad. Now, this is a Copper Belt Lusaka Road. What about the rural setting? When you turn off from Kapiri, going to Nakonde, mm. can you drive, my brother? These pronouncements must be realistically taken. So, for me, this Ukushinga want to butter Pamins on Akupwa. Let's stop telling this story. Development means you take care of the basics. And the basics means the infrastructure must be taken care of. And as the president alluded to, the basics of economics, when people are hungry, no matter what you do, they'll tell you in Shiriri. And that's what the problem is now. The Zambians are complaining about hunger. Yes. And that's where the president is failing. They've sold the maize. They've sold the minimum. We have a crisis. We are back to lining up for minimum. Mm. Those are basic, simple economic theories. And the both of us are lawyers. Eh? Mm. He's the economist. So who knows the economy? The but, lawyers or the economy? But we are thinking better than him. Yeah, correct. And that's a problem we have. This is why I agree with the president. And our history will tell you that Dopo to Oma Pala Lipuka. So Oko Tule, Oko to Oma, Pakula Lipuka no. So let him be careful. Okay, thank you very much. We will take another set of um, two questions. Set of two questions. Like I indicated earlier on, you tell us the media house you are representing and your full names. Yes, my brother. Thank you. My name is George from Fox Newspapers. My question is related to the Copper Belt, KCM as well as Japan. Uh It's been... One year, six, uh, one year, seven months, the current regime has been talking about bringing in a new investor and revamping KCM as well as uh, Mopani. And the voice on the Copper Belt is growing. What plans do you have as an award by Alliance to address the issues of KCM as well as uh, Mopani? And do you think the UPND has the capacity to address the challenges that is facing these two big economic lines in this country. Thank you very much, George. Uh, any other question? Um, good afternoon, President. Uh, my name is Boston Wanga from KBN TV. Uh, mine is just to get um, uh, a, a, a clear, uh, more, more explanation on uh, what should be done to recover the economy, indicated that the IMF has not yielded the uh, results up to now. So as, um, as the opposition political party, I just want to get your advice on how best uh, the economy can be recovered. And to President Luwadia Fube, I would like you to maybe help me, to give me a comment on, on um, what uh, the UPND government is doing. We have observed that many opposition political party leaders and members are being... Um, arrested in, in, in a view of fight or fighting corruption. So I'd like to get your comment on that. Uh, thank you very much, Boston, from KBN TV. Uh, just to set records straight, uh, you caught Zambia Must Prosper Party President as Kelvin Fuwe Warrior. The initials are KBF, but when we write in full, it is Kelvin Fove Wadi. He's not Mr. Fove. He's Mr. Wadi. Mr. Wadi. If you say Mr. Fove, you will not answer. You say you are talking to a different <laughs> person, a wrong person altogether. Yeah. yeah. Brother yes. Fove. yes. <laughs> I know it once happened at Millennium TV and somebody said, Mr. Fove, that no. man crowd. No. <laughs> and he, the president said, ah, No, 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 I will not answer. You are talking to a wrong person. Me, I'm Mr. Wadi, not Mr. Fove. Well, yeah. Mm. So we have two questions. Maybe the first one to do with KCM Mopani. I don't know who takes it. Um, this is a very, very important question that you've asked because it borders on 
the real economy on the copper belt. I have been born, raised, and I grew up on the copper belt to a point until we are coming to university. Our parents basically worked for the mines, so I understand the geography of the copper belt. I also understand the economics of the copper belt. The truth of the matter is the European government does not have the answers to resolve the copper belt problem. Now, Pani and KCM today are suffering. The simple reason is there is just no plan. There is no rescue plan. The operational costs for Mopani and KCM cannot be met with the levels of production which are going on on the Copper Belt today. That's number one. Number two, the contractors who are the majority of the employers who work but feed off the mine also are not being paid by the mines because the mines are not producing enough. So there lies the problem. The mines can't produce enough to pay the contractors, and therefore the contractors are laying off the workers. What is happening now on the copper belt is shameful. More so that the UPND government condemned what the PF was doing, and then they go and do the same thing by appointing a receiver. Sit the receiver at KCM, and we're doing the same thing, which they said was wrong. Today, as we speak, three quarters of the contractors, subcontractors, subcontracting themselves with the mines are not working, which means the majority of the people who generate money around the copper belt are not there. What is the solution? The, the solution is very simple. You must find an investor who is willing to fit into the profile of what your developmental agenda is. We, at least, speaking for myself as Zamba must prosper, I've taken a study and we understand that that copper belt needs to be revamped. But some of the investors who are coming on board today, the president is talking of negotiating with the Vedanta. 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 But these negotiations have taken how long? And today, what are the answers? He was on the copper belt, I think he's been there two, three times now. And the people on the copper belt were expectant. He has come back, no solutions. The truth of the matter is, those negotiations may not yield the results. Who owns these mines? Perhaps that's the starting point. The mines belong to this country. And whether you like it or not, you have to make a political decision. Are you going to let your people keep suffering because you think you must be negotiating forever? No. A political decision means that ZCCM, IH, and other investors must come on board, discuss and say, we are taking over the operations of the mines. After all, the mines are in Zambia. What would be wrong with, first of all, saying the mines become operational? Then we provide an investor later. Because this government can find the money. This government can put up collateral for that mine so that the mines become operational. We've got enough people in northwestern province running the mines. Get some of those people to come and run the KCM and the Mopani arrangements whilst you negotiate with the Vendanta. To me, that would be an immediate solution whilst you look for a long-term solution. But if you don't have the mines operating, there is no production, or the production is very low, there will be no answer to the problems on the copper belt. Further, what the president and the UPND will not tell you is that they've got operational problems. The operational problems are these. One, machineries are breaking down underground. Don't be surprised if there are floods in one of these mines because we don't have enough pumpings, I mean the pumps to pump out the water to get that water into the Kafiri River. We don't have enough of the lime to stop that pollution of that water. And that smoke, which we used to inhale, Kumufurida, to that center, it's a center, Taile Fuma. Center nga Taile Fuma, it means umu kubata wale ipaya, tawale ipika. It means there's no mining going on. You go and see whether Chambeshi is producing anything. Even that economic zone around Chambeshi is dead. I've been there, I've seen. So what they are doing now is getting the, what about Black Mountain? From the Black Mountain, to go and start, the new leaching which they're doing 
so that mining takes place now with acid. But the actual digging of the copper is a problem because the machinery is old. There's been no replacement of machinery. How are you going to start mining when the machines are old? Everything that you see on the roads by way of machinery is going to the new mines in northwestern province. The copper belt is dying slowly, and the UPND has no solutions. For us, we have a plan, but I shall wait until I launch the manifesto for the party to tell you what plans we have about the copper belt. Because we've been there, we've studied that situation, and we have a solution. But right now, that's just an overview of some of the solutions which are capable of sorting out that problem on the copper belt. But if you don't mind, the contractors are not being paid. The copper belt dies. Once the copper belt mining is not taking place, the contractors are not being paid. Where's the money coming from, from the copper belt? Everything dies. This is what we mean when we talk about production cities in Zambia must prosper. Production cities identify an industry which will be an anchor for the economic activities around a town. Once that is functioning, then the other subsidiary companies move in. Trade, commerce, banking. You also have residential homes being created. You have hospitals being created. You have banking being created. Then marketing, trade, and commerce comes in. Bana marketia, they will not sell anything. No one is buying. Even if the teachers on the copper belt are paid today, it's not the same as Bashmain in Gavafora. I've been there. Bashmain in Gavafora, the country, I mean the town, shakes. Because they're the major contributors to the economy. The others feed off the mines. I hope you understand. So we shall give that a bit more discussion when we get to launch the manifesto. Who's the other brother who asked me a personal question? KBM. Maybe the question should be, do we have a plan? At least, I will not answer for the economic front, but yes. I'll speak for myself. As Zambia must prosper, we do have a manifesto which we are about to launch. So perhaps before I go two steps ahead, or is it three steps ahead? <laughs> Allow us to launch the manifesto so that you can look at it, dissect it, read, and then you see where we're coming from. But for us, as Zambia must prosper, we're about to launch that manifesto about how the economy will be attacked. And we shall attack it left, right, and center to ensure that every area and every sector is going to be talked about so that Zambians get some hope that there is a future to look forward to. But with the UPND, one thing I can tell you is I worked with uh, my good friend Aga in the HLM during the alliance, the UPND alliance, leading up to the elections in 2021. The truth of the matter is there is no vision on the economy. There is no economic plan that will help this country revive itself or get itself from where it is. So from the UPND perspective, I see no solution. But there'll be a lot of talk. And you'll be told uh, it's very important, very important. Uh, that, that, that one will come. But as to solutions, could it be? So for me, that's where I'll leave it now. Uh, thank you very much. To call upon uh, uh, President uh, Kabimba to tackle the question uh, to do with the arresting of um, opposition political party leaders by UPN, the government of President Haga in the HLM. Every day we hear an opposition leader is arrested and so forth. What's our take? Okay, let me just uh, give another dimension to what President uh, ABF has said about the economy. It's, it's very important that as Zambia, we understand the history of the the third world economy, including our economy here in Zambia. These are economies that have been designed, structured by our imperialist former colonial masters 
not to be productive economies for, for their people. This is what is known as a neo-colonial economy, an economy that is on the back or designed on the back of what we call independence. I laugh myself when I read because now I'm able to to read the national anthem very well. You know, when I was at primary school and secondary school, I just used to stand up proud and free. You know, I didn't even know what it meant to be proud and what it meant to be free. Mm. Now I understand. Now I understand. This economy was designed to be an economy that will produce raw material for the West and the Americans. Mm. That's the purpose of this economy. Nothing else. Nothing else. So when you listen to UPND ministers, and I remember a few colleagues in the media uh, have the same memory as mine, and we follow. The first Sunday interview that is Tumbego Musukotone had as Minister of Finance after UPND won. This is what he said. We are going to ensure that we produce copper in this country and we want export this copper in its raw form. Mm. We're going to have value addition mm. to copper to enhance its value. That's what he said. Over two, over two years ago now, I want you colleagues in the media to do some research whether or not there is any form of value addition that <laughs> you have seen in copper. <laughs> just go and do some research. Even just Kawaya Kangono, Kamene Wachosa Kukopa Manje, and we are able to do it here in Zambia. The answer is zero. The Zambian copper is only ours when it is underground. When it is mined and it comes you know, to the surface, it belongs to Vedanta, it belongs to, to First Quantum, and the HH and Stumbego Musokotwani have no control and no claim over that copper. The price for the copper is pegged at the London Metro Exchange in London by fellows that don't own the copper. Poor countries. There's no copper being produced in, in London. There's no, no copper that is produced in France. But the only the copper which comes from Zambia and even peg the price. That is the structure of this economy. Mm -hmm. So when you think that uh, the IMF as a fish in the pond is going to empty its own pond, you must be a fool. You must be a fool. There's no way the IMF, which was designed to keep African countries in perpetuity, in poverty, in perpetuity, is ever going to redeem this economy. That is nonsense. I know those are the, are the textbooks that Stumbeko Musokotwani and the HH and others read at the University of Zambia. I know. But surely, when you tell me the age of 60, there is nobody who turns the, uh, the age of 60 who is described as intelligent. They describe us as wise. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's nobody who is going to, to describe me now and say, Mr. Kabimba is intelligent. I must be a wise man now because of what I've seen in the past. HH is 60. Is over 60. Surely they must begin to turn into wise men. But they don't seem to. They don't seem to. So the whole of this IMF thing is a hoax. Nowhere in the world has the IMF ever redeemed a third world economy. Nowhere. And these two guys know that very well. So, somebody said, you always like this statement of saying, if they do, come and take my last dollar. How many, how, many, how many dollars do you have? So I can also challenge you. 
If this economy improves, come and get my last dollar. Mm. Because it won't. It won't. Arrests. I don't think that President KBF and myself here, and I'm sure any well-meaning Zambian would have a problem with anybody arrested for offenses that they committed. Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so. What we have a problem with as political party leaders and even as lawyers yes. is the due process of the law. Of the law. That's all. That is our problem. If somebody is arrested for a bondable offense, give them bond. If somebody is arrested for a bailable offense, grant them bail. That's all that we are saying. And this is what HH himself said. Mm-hmm. As we were swearing in Lemika job as his IG. I didn't, I didn't hear him say that with the current IG. Maybe he has changed his mind. <laughs> but with the Kajoba, that's what he said. That's all that we are saying. You can't be arresting people, causing trauma to their families, you know, to their friends. And then at the end of the day, they are acquitted. Mm. Mumbipiri is a case in point. Hundred and what? Four hundred and twenty-seven days at the quarter. Four hundred and twenty-seven days in prison. And when she is about to be acquitted, because there was no evidence against her, they enter a knowledge. That is criminal. That's criminal on the part of the state. That's not the due process of the law. That's all that we're asking. That's all that we're demanding. And he promised this himself. I've been arrested 15 times. Oh my God. <laughs> I spent, you know, and you know, he's a very bad, bad public speaker as an economist. Yeah. <laughs> very bad speaker, very boring. <laughs> I was in Mukobeko 127 days. We went to see him with this man, to Mukobeko, just to see how healthy he is. We went to visit him in Mukobeko. Even as people think that I don't like him. Okay? Mumbipiri has done 427 days. So between Mumbipiri and the HH, if you ask me who is the hero, it's Mumbipiri, a woman. My church was a like 127 days. Like I said last time, you must now shut up. We have a hero in now. You don't want to listen to that boring voice. Under have been seven days. So, colleagues, that's all that we are demanding. Due process of the law. That's all. Because he himself complained about these things when he was in the opposition. What is good for the goods? Good for the gander. Must be good for the gander too. Thank you. We call upon uh, ZMP President KBF to comment on the harassment of former political party leaders and national leaders in this country. Um, I just want to make an addition to what my big brother said here. Um, you see, as lawyers, we, we have a certain training. And uh, the first thing is due process must be obeyed, as has been explained. But also, the investigations have to be done before you actually knock on someone's door. And this is what HH promised us. And we're not saying anything that he didn't say. Exactly. This is what he said because of his own experiences. I'll give you a case in point. Um, former President Lungu's home was raided. Huh? This is a former head of state. Whether you say you're going to see Mama Estalungu or you're going to see another person in that house, the point is this is the former president's home. Mm. You go with grinders, you go with a battalion of policemen and things like that. This is what we call psychological harassment. We don't do that. One, in a democratic country. Two, in a civilized country, which has laws. What would have stopped <clears throat> this government of the UPND, for example, to simply say, we are sending two plain clothes 
CID officials, go and drop a call out. Mm. Mama Esther Lungu, tomorrow report yourself at the police station. What would have stopped Mama Esther Lungu going mm. to the police station? In a very civilized man, all that drama we saw there wasn't going to take place. <clears throat> all that manpower, mm. the waste of government resources was not going to take place. But there it was, in full view of even those that supported their church, yes. the embassies, the Western embassies especially, they saw what was going on there. Have we seen that kind of harassment before? On a former head of state, at his home? No. But here's a question. What was the aim? No, we are looking for vehicles. How many vehicles came out of that yard? One little bit. How many man hours were wasted? How many police were mobilized? That was an operation planned. Until the former head of state came out and said, what is it that you want? There was going to be war there. And if we're not careful, people have been saying, no, the police conducted themselves professionally. <laughs> people can know that, uh, gentlemen, the point is, is a professional police would have simply said to CID officers, send a call out, Mama Salungu come to the police station. End of story. What we saw there was not professional. What we saw there was intimidation and psychological warfare on the mind of the former head of state. Because if you're going to touch his wife, technically you're already in his bedroom. You're already attacking him. You wanted him to leave the wife and say, no, 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 me, I'm not coming out. Which man does that? So when we talk of the rule of law, when we talk of good governance, these are some of the issues we're going to observe this government on. How are they attending to those things? How are they conducting themselves? How are they using the police, the investigation wings? Mm. Just using them like thrush dogs and saying, Go and back and make noise on people's doors until we get them out. Even to the police, we, we are begging, we are appealing the police force, please try and be as professional as you can. Because one day, what you're doing will happen to you, and you don't want that to happen to you. And the most disappointing part for me, as a person who was quite close to the president during the alliance period was that this is the same thing he kept drilling into my ears. No more, this won't happen. I will not allow this. These kind of promises we can see now, they were just talk for the sake of talk. I think we have a president in state house who's uh, not very conversant with the law. So we appeal to those that are supposed to advise him on legal matters, let them give him the proper advice so that the police are used properly. And indeed, he himself doesn't make unnecessary pronouncements. Yesterday we saw Honorable Uvinda on his birthday being thrown in custody. Happy birthday being sung on the behind prison bars. How unfortunate is that? <laughs> but you see, you ask yourself, what kind of uh, offense was this? A breach of some parliamentary rule of some kind and stuff like that. Are we honestly going to be throwing each other in prison back and forth? Again, look at the amount of police. Man hours being wasted on such a simple arrest. What would have stopped them from simply saying, this is the vice president or acting vice president of a political party? Send a call out. Two policemen, again, would have been enough. We want you to report yourself at Woodlands Police. End of story. Are you honestly telling me, citizens, that uh, given Lubin, they would have refused to go to Woodlands Police Station? I don't think so. So why get that again? But for me, it's... Uh... Thank you, thank you. Anyway, Mazambians, we are promising you that uh, a day is coming when all this will be a thing of the past. At least we want to ensure that the rule of law gets back to what it's supposed to be. Not just Pakamwa, but in reality. Thank you. Should we take the last...
last two questions before we close or if we are done I will call upon the host president honorable winter kabimba to give us closing remarks thank you uh, i just want to thank everybody that has come mm. particularly my dear brother here president kbf my brother party spokesperson my colleague vice president of the economic front all of you colleagues in the media fraternity and the Thing that this it should not be should be the first meeting but not the last one. Yes. In this now, this is about this one. No, 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 no. Not now. <laughs> not now. <laughs> not now. Not now. Okay. So we shall continue to confer and the, to interact with you as media so that you know exactly what is going on. Like my brother said, some of the things we can't disclose them now. of the time but i can tell you that uh, that news shall be juicy <laughs> i know how you like good news my meat but that news is especially the three steps i uh, especially to our parent <laughs> <laughs> you know that uh, that is <laughs> bad here. so thank you very much my brother again for coming thank you mr president it has been a great honor mm. for us in the economic front mm. thank you and you have a good day thank you very much Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>